I hope you're enjoying this control panel building series. If you're seeing this clip, then you've entered in the middle of the series, so make sure you go back to part one and see it all the way through. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell us in the comments what you think about this video series and what you'd like to see the next one on. So in this episode, we're going to talk about wiring, and I'm only going to go through connecting three wires because everything else is redundant. We're going to do an example of our main power wire, our control circuit wires, and our shielded cable wires. Which here's our wiring diagram. As you can see, we're going to go from a 60 amp disconnect to this 30 and 20 amp circuit breaker. Right here, here's our 60 amp disconnect, and there's our 30 and our 20. We need to determine the size wire needed. To do this, go to theautomationstore.com and go to our article section and then electrical. Find the wire size versus voltage drop, and this panel is 240 volt. The column on the left is the number of amps, so we'll go down to 60. Then we'll go to the first column that has a number in it, which is number 4, and this is the wire size we need. Also, the number stated here is the number of feet that you can run this particular wire size at and it handle this many amps. So one thing about the wire we use is we use what's called MTW wire, and this is number four MTW wire, and you can see it's really, really flexible. And here is THHN like you'd find in Lowe's, and you can see it's much less flexible. So what I like about this wire, especially on the bigger wires, is it lays in the wire duct really nicely. When it comes to stripping wire, I, I honestly just use your basic strippers like you would get at a hardware store. There's also many types of automatic strippers, and you can see this one here has a depth gauge on it, and then you put the wire in, butt it up to it, and it automatically strips the wire for you. And then that won't work on wire as large as we're using for our power wiring. For bigger wire, we have these type of cutters, and it's kind of like, um, almost like tubing cutters for copper. You just put it on, you rotate it around, and there you go. As you can see here, even though this is MTW wire, it lays in the wire duct really nice. It makes for a real clean control panel build. So this is L3, we're going to stick it in. Now we're just going to snug it up because at the end I'll torque all of these. Also, as I connect wires up, I like to use a highlighter and just highlight the wires that I have connected. That way it's really obvious what I've done and what I still need to do. Now for our smaller wires, we're going to use our strippers, which could be these automatic strippers or it could be the manual strippers. And we're going to use one of these ferrules on each wire. So it simply slides over the wire and then it will have some type of crimper like this. Now don't take your wire strippers and just try to pinch it down. There is a tool designed exactly for this. And this is one thing, invest in a good tool. Um, because there are some ferrule tools out there that are so awkward to use that your hands will kill you at the end of the day. But you just put it on there, crimp it, and you can see it's a nice crimp connection. The main reason for using this is so that you don't end up with little whiskers, you know, coming out of one wire and shooting over into the next one. After that, we're going to put a wire label on it. And I have printed out all the wire labels for this already. In fact, I have a machine that um, you can just enter all the numbers, it prints them all out, and this is a heat shrink label. So we're going to slide the label onto the wire, and you can see it can be put anywhere on it right now. And we're going to wait till the end to actually heat shrink these down. Now everybody has opinion on which way, what orientation the wire label should go. The only thing I would say is stay consistent. That way if somebody is looking into the panel and trying to find a particular wire, they don't have to look this away to see this row and turn around and look this away to see this row. Now we're going to connect the shielded cable. Now this shielded cable is going to our remote pendant that has our buttons on it. And on this side it's going to connect to both of these drives. Now you want to keep the shield intact as close as you can to the components. Now the reason for all this extra length is we need to run the ground wire up to this ground terminal up here. So once we strip it, we'll take that one shielded wire and run it all the way up. And once you've stripped away the jacket of the shielded cable, you'll see that it has this one bare wire wrapped around the outside of it, and that is your shield. And we'll put an article in the description of this video that gives you a little more information on shielded cable, where and how to terminate the shield. And then after that, you'll see a full, and we're going to discard the foil that's exposed. So go ahead and take it off of there, and we'll cut it out of the way. And one final step I like to do is I like to take a piece of heat shrink and just put at the end where we've removed the PVC jacket. 
And really this is mostly just to keep the installation looking clean. But if you were to say we had it up here, it would also keep that little bit of shield fraying from accidentally hitting a terminal. We're going to take our shielded cable and we're going to route it up to our ground block and connect it. Now I really didn't talk about the terminal blocks earlier, but um, so our gray terminal blocks are basic connection blocks that um, have four points and they're all common. And then also you can get these jumpers and there's various end anchors, blocks, accessories, but mainly these jumpers you can put in between two of them and that'll make these two terminals common. And the other thing I have up there is a ground terminal block. And you can see here on the back side of it, all four points are common, but it's also common to the DIN rail. So this is a way you can ground things directly to your panel. All right, now we're ready to connect the wires. And I'm going to start by figuring out which ones don't go here and go ahead and get them unraveled. That way we don't end up with a balled up mess right here. All right, so I've routed the wires and I end up with four spare wires on this. So for those, I usually try to lay them in a piece of wire duct and just leave them full length just in case we need to add something later. And then again, I put a piece of shrink wrap on it. Now I haven't done it yet, but when same time we shrink wrap the labels, we'll shrink wrap these. Now that we have them about the right length, we'll go ahead and cut these. This is where ferruling is so important because on this smaller wire where the strands are so fine, it's very easy to end up with one accidentally going into the next terminal. And then we'll put our wire labels on each one of them. Then if you have twisted pairs such as this, I don't unravel them except where necessary because it just makes it look a little nicer. Now we'll go ahead and hook these wires up. Now I don't like to use a lot of wire ties on my panels because first thing a maintenance guy is going to do when he's troubleshooting and tracing wires out is cutting them all off and then your panel looks horrible. But occasionally you do need one. So I am going to tie these together just to neaten them up. And even then I'm only going to tie them a minimal amount. All right, that is all the internal wiring on this panel. It's a good time to check your hands. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.